Kobe packed all of his belongings into the back of his car, taking one last look at the window to the basement floor apartment that had been his home for the past three years. Man, he loved this place. It was where his band, Toxic Bedsheets, had first been formed, and where they had rehearsed nearly every single day of that three years. But, apparently, the woman who had moved into the unit directly above Covey seven months ago was not a fan of the late-night rehearsals, and had been complaining to the landlord, which was infuriating for several reasons, the most obvious being that the old buzzard had never once said a single word to Covey about the noise being an issue. His previous upstairs neighbor had been super chill and said that as long as they cut the noise off by 11, he had no issue. But this woman... This woman apparently hated music and anything else that brought joy. Tyler and Ethan, the couple in 1C, had once told him that while they were out walking their dog, she'd actually hissed at the dog and mumbled a slur under her breath so vile I won't even repeat it here. Kobe had been informed two weeks ago that he needed to find a new place. It had taken time, but he had eventually found a place that was perfect. It was the right side of a duplex unit across town, the other half being owned by a fellow musician, and they'd worked out a rehearsal schedule amongst themselves so that everyone could continue on in their pursuit of their musical dreams. It was a win-win. The only problem was the current owner would not be leaving until tomorrow morning, and... Little Miss High and Mighty had complained that she did not want him there another night and demanded that he leave tonight instead of in the morning as was originally planned. Didn't help matters that this woman was also the mother of the landlord. So she kind of had his nuts in a sling, so he went along with it. Kobe was fine with it. It just meant one night in a hotel and then on to his perfect home. As he closed his trunk and began to walk around to the driver's side, he saw Little Miss Sunshine looking out her window. He figured it was only the polite thing to do to wave goodbye, so he gave her the good old one-finger salute and hopped in his car. Kobe pulled into the local hotel parking lot and wandered into the massive lobby. It looked way out of his price range, but what the hell? It was only one night, and he had no doubt that Toxic Bed Sheets was on its way to the top. Hey, man, you have any rooms available? Just need one for tonight, he said as he approached the front desk. The clerk turned and looked at him with a worried expression. Well, sir, um, we do have one room available. It's great, I'll take it. Well, sir, see, this room, we, well, we try not to rent it out. You see, people have complained that they believe it to be haunted. No one has ever stayed the whole night. (laughs) Listen, man, I don't believe in ghosts and I'm pretty beat. I'll take it. What's the charge? Well, sir, like I said, no one ever stays the whole night, so we won't charge you until morning? If you stay. And if I stay, what's the charge? (laughs) Honestly, not sure. No one has ever stayed, like I said. Say, $50? A room in a place like this could easily go for three times that amount, so he quickly agreed and shuffled to the elevator to make his way to his home for the night. He unlocked the door and set his overnight bag down next to the bed and fell face first onto the mattress, crashing almost instantly. It was an hour later when Kobe awoke to a chill in the room, and as he stirred back into consciousness, he heard a low whisper coming from the direction of the window. The voice mumbled. What the hell? Kobe wondered aloud, and again, the voice repeated. The chill in the room only deepened, and Kobe felt suddenly uneasy. He went to grab his cell phone to check the time and recoiled quickly as the phone was covered in a layer of ice. The voice bellowed with slightly more urgency. To hell with this, Colby exclaimed. Using the sleeve of his hoodie to pick up his phone, he grabbed his bag and exited the room as quickly as he could. Once he reached the lobby, he called over his shoulder. Sorry, man. 
Guess you won't be getting that 50 bucks. No worries, sir. Happens all the time. I'm used to it. Covey gave the man a quick nod, chucked the keys at him, and exited back to his car. Once he closed the door behind him, he again went for his cell phone, only to find that it was completely fine, with no traces of ice at all. He called his friend Finn, praying that he would answer. Dude, it's like 1 a.m. What the hell do you want? I just need a place to crash for the night, man. Our number one fan decided she wanted me out tonight instead, so... I just need somewhere to sleep. Yeah, man, I mean, my home is your home. But the thing is, the only spot to crash in the house is the couch in the basement. And I avoid it as much as I can. I think that damn thing's haunted. <laughs> Seems to be the trend tonight. What? Nothing. That's fine, man. I'm beaten. I just want to sleep. I'll take it. Your funeral, pal. Side door's unlocked. I'll help you set up your gear at the new place in the morning, but I'm going back to bed. Thanks, man, he said hanging up and pointed his car toward Finn's. Once again, Kobe grabbed his overnight bag from the passenger seat next to him and made his way to the side entrance of Finn's place, letting himself in. He set his bag down on the floor, flopped on the couch, and fell immediately asleep, not even bothering to remove his shoes. It was about 45 minutes later when Kovey was again awoken by a chill in the room and a whisper calling out to him. The chill deepened, allowing Kovey to see his breath in the room. It became so cold in the room, he couldn't take it anymore. The whisper proclaimed again. Kovey wasn't sure he could take much more and again found himself retreating into the night. He pinned a note to the side door, telling Finn that he had bailed, and again went back to his car. He pinned a note to the side door, telling Finn that he had bailed, and again went back to his car. Nearly 2 a.m., exhausted, feeling a little uneasy about his previous two attempts at a bed, Kobe dialed his mom and dad's landline number and prayed that they wouldn't be too upset that he was calling so late. Kobe, are you okay? Was there an emergency? Are you hurt? His mom answered, instincts kicking in immediately. He couldn't help but chuckle. I'm fine, Mom. I just need a place to sleep for the night. I thought you had until morning, she replied, the concern creeping again into her voice. Yeah, well, the lady upstairs had different ideas on the subject. I hate that bitch, she replied with a scoff. God, he loved his mom. Yeah, me too. So, can I sleep there tonight? Well, I suppose so. But you know that the only room we still have as a guest room is your grandfather's old room in the attic. I'm not sure you want to stay there, honey. I'm starting to think the attic might be... Haunted? Colby replied with a sigh. Yeah, how'd you know? <laughs> Lucky guess, Ma. I can barely keep my eyes open at this point, so... I don't know that there's much choice... I'll take it. And with that, Kofi found himself in his third room, hoping that it was true that the third time was, in fact, the charm. He pulled the old quilt down and climbed into bed, drifting to sleep quickly yet again. It was about 30 minutes later that that old familiar chill began to creep into the room, waking Kofi yet again. At this point, he was getting beyond a little creeped out. What was happening? Why again? Came the familiar whisper as if answering his question. The chill in the room only seemed to increase in intensity. The whisper cried again. Kobe's face and fingers felt so numb he began to fear that they would crack and he would shatter into a million pieces. He couldn't take the stinging pain of the cold any longer and he attempted to move, to run but his body seemed not able to reply to his commands slowly. As if walking through quicksand, he made his way down the steps to the attic, back to the main floor of the house. As soon as he was out of the attic, his limbs began to respond again, and he ran as fast as he could out of his childhood home and into the night. Kovey was 
exhausted, and he felt as though he was going insane. He drove around town trying to find somewhere, anywhere he could just rest. He came across a seedy looking motel and finally just said, fuck it. There was nowhere else to go and he didn't want to keep intruding upon friends and family. Seeing as it was nearly 3 a.m., he stepped into the front desk area with tacky, green, indoor-outdoor carpet, animal heads aligning the walls, and an old-school cigarette machine in the corner. The front desk clerk looked like he hadn't bathed in some time, and that the word dentist was probably not in his vocabulary. But Kobe didn't care. He just wanted to sleep. Hey, you got a room I can crash in? Any room is fine, I just really need some sleep. Yeah, got a room. You ain't gonna want it, though. <sighs> Let me guess. The room's fucking haunted, Kobe said, as the fear and disbelief began to creep in. Yeah. You psychic, boy? <laughs> no. Just the most unlucky human alive, he replied. After they settled the price and Colby again held a room key in his hand, he made his way down the walkway to what he hoped would be the room that would give him that sweet salvation of sleep. Not bothering to turn on the lights due to a combination of exhaustion and really not wanting to see the cleanliness or most likely lack thereof of the room, Colby flopped on the bed and again attempted to get some sleep. A mere ten minutes later, Again, the room began to chill, with such an increase in intensity that Kobe felt his hair freeze and his fingers instantly numb. Oh, oh. The voice proclaimed more urgently. Kobe began to feel panicked. He felt the cold of the room enveloping every inch of him. His heart constricted. His limbs felt heavy like lead, and he was so cold. Oh, oh. It was the voice all but screamed. Before his lips could freeze together, Kobe opened his mouth wide and began to scream. Why are you doing this? Why have you been chasing me all around town? I just want to sleep. Leave me alone. Stop tormenting me. I can't handle it anymore. Go put on some socks. <laughs> from our sponsor. Do you like apples? Yeah. Venitas. Yeah. How do you like them apples? <laughs> Venitas is a premium gaming peripheral brand geared toward developing high performance products. We're currently working toward creating new, exciting, and unique products not currently found on the market. With quality to match its sleek and beautiful design, I can honestly say that my Venitas mouse is the best that I've ever owned, and I'm looking forward to expanding my collection of Venitas products. Venitas ships internationally with extremely low international shipping costs, and shipping is free to the US and Canada. Your products will arrive quickly and carefully packaged with most orders arriving within seven to 10 business days. If you're looking to upgrade your setup in an affordable way without substituting looks, Venitas is an optimal choice. And when you use code Press Start Mom at checkout, Venitas is offering a 10% discount on your order. You'll be doing mom a solid, and you'll be doing yourself a solid. Everyone wins. Thank you so much to Venitas for sponsoring this video. Can you see me? Hello? Can you find me? I'm here. Behind you, look. Behind you. I'm behind you. I am right behind you. Don't be scared. I just want to play a game with you. Hey, don't you run away. Please stay. <laughs> Into 
windsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. So windsy windsy spider went up the spout again. <laughs>